Joining me right now is Gayard Voigt. He'll be fighting on July 21st in Perth at Hex Fight Series 15 versus Stephen Kennedy. What's going on, Gayard? Hey, man. I'm good. Thanks. The last time we saw you in MMA competition was over a year ago. Why did you take so much time off? Man, I've been having babies and shit, eh? Babies and traveling. I think these last four years, I've had one fight per year and lost all four of them, man. And the last fight I won was against a teammate I'm with now. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. That's, that's kind of a trip, right? Like, you, the last man, time that's... you fought somebody, then you actually joined the team that he's at, and you're training with him every day. Is that helpful to you? Yeah, man. He's actually my boy before um, we fought. So we started um, training in MMA at the same time, but at different gyms. And we'd get together and, like, teach our bullshit techniques that we learn at these gyms. And then eventually down the road, I think it was maybe two or three years later, we, they matched us up in this tournament format. So usually I wouldn't fight like a friend of mine. But because it was a tournament, it was this brace tournament, we were pretty much forced to fight each other. So, yeah, that was, it was super awkward. But, I mean, it's probably the most relaxed I've ever been in a fight, fighting my mate. <laughs> when you see all these guys, you know, in the big leagues, and they're all talking about they're not going to fight each other, what do, you, what do you think about that? Because you actually face that problem with, you know, with your, you know, training partner now. Yeah, so, so we never trained with each other leading up to, like, I mean, we maybe had, like, three sessions when we weren't, you know, all that good at MMA. And eventually when they matched us up, it was pretty awkward. But, I mean, we were training at different gyms. We were representing different gyms, you know. And I think Wills was coming back. He was coming back from, like, after, like, a few losses. And I was, I was coming off a win. So, yeah, we, I didn't really have too many options if I wanted to com continue in the tournament. And I knew, I knew the promoter, the wanker, was trying to, like, pit Coconut against Coconut because he knew it would throw it down. You, all, you mentioned that you were having babies. How many babies did you have? <laughs> I got three boys, man. Oh, man. So you got some, it must be difficult raising three yeah. wild ones. Look at these mongrels. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Um, Yes, yeah, so I, about four years, we sold up everything a couple of years ago in 2016, and we traveled Asia for about seven months with the boys. We went through Thailand. That's why I hooked up with um, Team Quest Thailand over in Chiang Mai with um, Dylan Fusil and that. And then um, eventually when we came back, oh, while, while we were traveling, Suman got a hold of me, and he was like, are you training? Do you want to get a fight while you're over there? And he hooked me up with a fight for Rebel, and I lost to um, Song Kinan. He called me off an arm and guillotine in the first round. Yeah. And so ever since Suman got me that fight, I pretty much just go, all right, sweet, I'm a part of a training top team. So when, I came, when we came back from our travels, you know, turned up at a training top team pretty much every day. What made you decide to just pack up everything and travel Asia? But that, that was all my wife, man. So my wife got into yoga. You know, she had a few issues growing up. And she'd done this 40-day fly thing where they got to decide on, like, goals and stuff that they, that they wanted to attain. And she always wanted to travel. So she was like, I was at work one day. She emailed me, asked me if I wanted to travel. She was like, what do you think about selling up everything? I was like, oh, it sounds good. Might as well while we're still young, you know, it's a good opportunity for us. So, yeah, we pretty much went through Kuala Lumpur, Johor, Baru. Um, we went through Thailand, Hua Hin, Chiang Mai, Bangkok. Uh, we went to Laos. We just missed out on Cambodia and Vietnam. And we managed to visit um, China while we were there with that fight. Oh man, that's that's an insane journey. You must have had a crazy, great time. Man. But and like, there's not many people from South Auckland that do that kind of stuff. Like from where we're from, man, it's it's pretty, it's really different. All right, now you're supposed to return to the cage at UFN 15. What happened to that fight? I have no idea, man. So, so it was a middleweight fight. I've been trying to get to welterweight ever since we've been back in Australia. And um, Suman was like, you know, take this middleweight fight and then make your way down once you made that weight cut and everything. I found out way in day, Suman messaged me. He was like, what are you doing? I was at work. I was just like, bro, you can't be serious, man. And I, I knew it straight away because he pulled out on one of my teammates a couple of shows before that. And I'm um, Sam, Sam Toitu. So, yeah, he pretty much just told me, you know, he's pulled out. His heart's not in it. He doesn't want to fight him. And he was coming off a win against a Chinese dude from AFC. So, yeah, once I heard that, I, was, I went and made weight and everything, but I was pretty depressed. After that, what yeah. got you back into the gym and started training again and, you know, looking to get into the ring, getting into the cage and fighting again? 
Um, I, I just saw the next Urban, and I saw all the things happening around Australia with like the promotions and the fighters that are getting a lot of push from these promotions and everything. And with Hex, I always like try to get on Hex. You know, whenever any of the boys were fighting on Hex, I'd always plan to, you know, if these guys get injured or if I injure them in training, I'll take their fight. <laughs> but whenever I say that, I always get injured, so it was pretty stupid. But I just wanted to, I needed to get back in there. I wanted to get active again. You know, none of this one fight per year bullshit. Definitely. Now you get your chance. Uh, you've been preparing at uh, Australian top team, like you said. Yeah. How has camp been? It hasn't really been a camp because, <laughs> because it's a bit of a light last minute fight. I mean, I was trying to get a fight on the last Urban that went past. And that guy pulled out as well. So I didn't really have too many options. But once... We were talking about Hicks one day, and they were saying Stephen Kennedy was looking for an opponent to fight some Perth. And I was like, all right, cool. Uh, like, I wouldn't mind fighting Steve at 80, because I think he fought at 80 for his last ACB fight. But I think Steve came back, and he was like, it's middleweight or nothing. You can't be fuck cutting weight. So I thought, oh, yeah, sweet. That's us, you know. I need, I need to get a fight in, pretty much. Who have you been working closely with, you know, in the past couple of months? Well, usually it's the bigger boys, you know, like um, Randall Ray. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've got Luke Mack Truck McKenzie. He's he's one of the am up and coming amateurs. Uh, Joel Kendrick. Joel Kendrick helps me heat. You know, I pretty much wrestle fuck him, and he boxes my ears in. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's mostly the bigger boys. I, like I still work with the smaller guys, like the lightweights and stuff, but they just move too quickly, and I get too tired chasing them around. Like you know, Alex Georgies is always there. He's always helping me out. You know, so yeah, mostly we've got quite a big team. So I've got heaps of training partners that I can use. Your opponent, Stephen Kennedy, UFC veteran, former Hex champ. What are your thoughts on him? Oh, he's a good fighter, man. He's, 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 he's taken some scalps there before he made the UFC. He smashed some, like, high-level dudes, high-level black belts. And, and him himself, he's a, he's, a, he's a black belt, I'm pretty sure, BJJ black belt. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's legit. He's definitely legit. And he's, and he's got a name. So, you know, I'm pretty excited for this fight. It's easy to get up for it. Did you check out his last fight at ACB 88? Yeah, I saw, I saw bits of it, man. It looked boring. I, I could see how frustrated he was also. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited to get in there. I think he's, he's you know, wanting to get a bit of frustration out in this fight. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty good, pretty exciting. If you look on social media, right, and everybody looks on social media because everybody's on social media, and Kennedy, he seems like he's pretty confident in this matchup. Do you think he's underestimating you a little bit? Oh, of course, man. And, and, like, I don't blame him. He's from Perth. You know, he's a name in Perth. He's got to get up. He's the one selling the tickets and stuff. Uh, like, props to him for, for getting up. But I don't really care. I'm old school with this shit. Like, if, if he says it on social media, I, unless he says it to my face, I don't really care. What kind of performance do you expect out of yourself when they lock the cage doors? No, I've got to finish him, you know. I've always fought to finish. I've never fought for decisions, never. You know, I think I've gone to a decision once and I've got my ass whooped for that one. But, um, yeah, I've just got to finish him, that's all. You know, I'm always going to be looking for the finish. That's how we train, you know. We don't train for chasing decisions or wrestle humping people, you know. So, yeah, I'm definitely looking for a finish. Whether it's on the ground, standing up, most likely standing up. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, July 21st, Perth. Hex Fight Series 15, Gerhard Voigt will be taking on Stephen Kennedy. It's a big fight for you, man. It's a big. It's probably the biggest name that you're facing so far, and it's a good way to snap your losing streak. Yeah, big time. I'm really excited for this fight, you know. And I've never fought on Hex. I've fought on, like, Nitro. I've fought on, like, quite a few of the top, top promotions here in Australia, but it's nice to, to finally get onto a Hex card and against a name like Stephen Kennedy. Man, I can't wait. All right, Gayard. Thank you for your time, man, and uh, good luck on this fight because I know it's something that has been expected for a long time, especially, like you said, all these guys pulling out constantly. Yeah, man, I'm really excited. Thanks for that, John. Uh, bro, I just want to give a quick shout-out to um, Elite Sports. They're helping me out with this fight with some fight shorts and everything. So, yeah, thanks for that, and thanks for the interview, bro. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, shout-out to Elite Sports. Check them out. Do they got a website or something? I'm pretty sure it's EliteSports.com. It's an American company. They do geese, rash guards, shorts. They pretty much just do all MMA geese.